Hello everybody, it's Jonathan Senor Smoke at the Ring of Fire in Westchester County. Uh, my YouTube subscribers have been writing to me and uh, asking about my uh, whereabouts in the last several months. And um, it's been more than several months. And the answer is quite simple. I haven't been able to make any videos. I've been too busy down here and upstairs at Curto's, writing business, building a business at the Ring of Fire. Time to get deep, Primo ceramic grills. You know, this summer, spring, late winter, I've been watching all these grills fly out of here, your traditional gas, pellet. Uh, but one thing that I noticed this year was that there has been a major uptick in ceramics, okay? And my personal preference out of all the grills that I own, in the last count there was about seven or eight of them, of every single fuel type you can imagine, I still prefer the Kamado, you know, cooking over live fire, whether it's wood or charcoal. And the Kamado style grill is the best vessel. I personally like the Primo. I like the Primo for a variety of reasons, from very um, uh, nonsensical reasons. I like the color, I like the black, I like the finish, I like the fact that it's made in America, that means something to me. And I do prefer the oval shape on the medium or the large and the extra large. You do get more cooking space and I like to be able to divide the, uh, the cast iron, um, use that cast iron divider and divide the firebox or two different temperature zones. I also have found uh, recently though, as I've dove deeper into the whole thing with the ceramics, is that you know, the Primo ceramic content that they use, their mixture, which is a proprietary mixture that George, the owner, um, has developed, I find that it insulates better than anything else that I've cooked on. Um, so uh, I also find that they get to temperature quicker than the other Kamados that I've cooked on. So they are definitely been my number one choice uh, right now. And uh, last night, what I did, you know, my wife said to me, listen, we're going to make a variety of things for dinner tonight. We're going to have, uh, it was really like a surf and turf. They're going to have burgers. Um, there was a ribeye steak, which is going to be for me. And then she had shrimp. Okay. So, and then some sides, which had nothing to do with the grill. So. I said, we're gonna turn the Primo, we're doing it on the Primo, no question about it, and we're gonna turn it into a Swiss Army knife. So, we started off with the hamburgers, so what did I do? I broke open my brand new Primo cast iron griddle. This, to me, this griddle is weaponized. Um, this thing, if you hit somebody with this, you would unquestionably, they'd be hospitalized. Um, I've never felt cast iron. I do deal with cast iron with the appliances as well, because a lot of the stoves, We'll have a cast iron um, plate for the middle of the burners on the stoves. And this, this cast iron griddle is heavier than anything, thicker than anything I've seen, both on the indoor and the outdoor. So what I did, I seasoned it up, put some canola oil on it, elevated, okay, elevated the Primo racks. So I had one drop down low, that was going to be for searing my steak later on. And then I took the hamburger griddle and popped it up and um, uh, seasoned it, burgers, probably cooked for about eight minutes, turned them into cheeseburgers, came out unbelievable, even developed a little bit of a smoke ring on them. Awesome, right? So next up, we had the shrimp, which I know we're gonna cook quickly. Now traditionally with the shrimp, we have a basket, which I don't like, um, or my wife wants me to put them on foil, because if I don't do that, they're gonna fall through the grates of any grill that I have. So I said, no, I don't wanna cook on foil. There's something, though I don't have scientific proof about this, I'm concerned about cooking under high heat with foil um, as a barrier between uh, the food and the live fire. Again, we're not using gas, we're using charcoal, wood. I'm just not comfortable with it. So I'm just concerned there's gonna be, there's gonna be traces of the aluminum on the food. So um, what I did was I said, let me flip the grate because if you, um, the griddle has a flat, side, which is what I cook the hamburgers on, but if you flip it, it's a grate. It's like a searing grate. So I flipped it over, again, seasoned it, boom, threw the shrimp, shrimp on there, and I could turn them without having to worry about something falling through. We made shrimp actually two weeks ago on my alfresco, and I must have lost about four or five shrimp through the grates. So left the shrimp on, closed the lid, let that convection smoke process do its thing. Shrimp came off in about eight to 10 minutes. Um, Phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. The cooked with the skin, um, with the shells on, so that actually insulated them, allowed for the longer cooker, uh, cooking time, and they came out fantastic. Um, 
I'm going to get at the end of the video a few things that I would have changed about these cooks to take them to the next level. We'll get to that in a little bit. Um, finally, the steak. My idea with the ribeye steak was influenced by a gentleman who came to me from another state a couple of years ago to buy an alfresco grill. And um, he had a technique where he would put a nice thick chop on the alfresco's cooking rack, leave it up there for about 10 to 15 minutes with low temperature, the smoker box working, infusing with some smoke. And then he would have a ripping, he'd have one of the burners, whether it was the IR sear burner or the normal burner, ripping. So then he would take the steak off and do the reverse sear down there. We did it, we tested it here at Curto's and um, um, outside and it came out phenomenal. So that's how I've been doing my thicker cuts of steak lately. So what I did, I took the grill off the Primo and I replaced it with their extension rack. So their extension rack basically elevates, if there are grates that elevate off the existing grates. So you're cooking with a whole nother level now. So what I did was, because I didn't, I didn't have the deflector, ceramic deflector plates um, in the grill at this point, so I, I put on the elevated rack, threw the ribeye on there, just put a little bit of um, brisket rub that I picked up at, um, at um, what is that place, Meadow Creek in the Dutch Country PA. Um, that guy Melvin, the owner, sent me this rub, which is fantastic, and um, just threw the rub on there, put the steak on, 10 minutes, close the lid, and um, just, you know, we're infusing with some smoke, some charcoal flavor. It was cooking, but it wasn't searing. After about 10 minutes, like the color that I, you know, that night had that beautiful, like, kind of like reddish mahogany hue to it. Did the poke test, we were still good, medium rare. Took it down to my lowered grate. Remember, that's the grate that I started this whole cook on that was low. Seared it for a couple of minutes. Took it off, cut into it. My God, it tasted like butter. And that's, of course, a ribeye because if it's heavily marbleization, that's always going to help matters with that buttery taste. But I cut into it <clears throat> and I had pretty much, <coughs> I cut into it pretty much edge to edge pink, um, medium rare, fantastic. Cooking on one lower grate, one higher grate, with the griddle, with the reverse griddle, and then with the extension rack. So within basically a half an hour, I had leveraged a lot of different cooking devices on the Primo and pretty much knocked it out of the park. Folks, um, there's a lot of content coming up. Stay tuned. And um, if you have any questions about Kamados, Kamado Joe, Kamado Joe 3, we'll have a whole other video coming up on that soon. The Primo, the Caliber, Blaze, let us know. Jonathan Senor Smoke, thank you very much. Talk soon. Peace.